How are you? Not too bad. Um, now, it's been two years since The Unforgettable Fire. Why, why has it been so long to um, have a new album coming out? Um, we just, just kind of forgot how to write songs and just went back to learn how to write songs and found out it took us about two years, but there's some good songs. You look lovely in bed, by the way, Paul. Oh, thank you. I'm sure you do. Um, <laughs> now, um, what sort of things have been inspiring you for, the new, for this new album? Well, right now it's you all the way. Um, I don't know. It's it's a collection of songs. It's kind of like maybe like an old Beatles album was. There's, there's no one point of view on the record. There's eleven different songs, eleven different points of view, and it's it's kind of all wrapped up in a in America or a place very like America, and the good and the bad that lies in that continent. Um, I don't know. I. I have. I don't really, you know, I haven't. I haven't listened to the record that much myself since we just finished it. But uh, so I might be able to answer the questions a little clearer in a few months. But I'm very pleased with the record. I think we all are. Now, and um, you're working with Eno again. Uh, yeah, Brian Eno and Daniel Lanois, the same two guys that we worked with on the Unforgettable Fire. What What is it you like so much about working with them? What do they add? Do you think extra? Uh, Danny's a good cook. Dan's good cook. Yeah, he's a great. <laughs> Brian's a great pool player. I must say, he's a great pool player. Um, so he always takes the money. That's the problem, you know. When you bring Brian out to play pool, he loves to win, which is a bit of a drawback. Now, Ed, you've just been doing the um, the soundtrack for uh, a movie called Captive. Yeah. Was that one of your ambitions to do that? Well, we've been saying it in interviews for about the last three or four years, and it was getting embarrassing. So I decided we'd have to do one at some stage. And we had a couple of months off just uh, at the end of the last tour, and I went into the studio and recorded a few things and then went looking for a film. So I, I found Captive through uh, the producer and uh, just did it. It was, it was a bit of a, a challenge and a bit of an experience. I'm not rushing back to do another movie. Um, <laughs> I, I think rock and roll is a lot better fun, to be honest. <laughs> What's the problem when you're doing a, a film soundtrack? Do you have to do you have to things like ding 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 ding? Lots of that. <laughs> Brilliant. Do that again, Paul. That was fantastic. All right. <laughs> Don't answer that then. Um, do you miss playing small gigs after having to? I mean, not having to, but playing such huge places all the time. We miss playing gigs <laughs> at the moment. I mean. Uh, if we were really to own up to it, I mean, I, I think I don't just I don't like making records half as much as I like to, to play to be on stage. And I think you two are a live band, and um, you know, as much as we do make records, and I think we're okay at making records. Uh, I think what's special about you two is is you two on stage, live. And we we tried playing the Hope and Anchor a few years ago, and it just didn't work out. Yeah, <laughs> we've. Some of them are a bit too kind of small for us. Some people come back and say, well, you know, I used to see in the Hope and Anchor or, uh, you know, and you were really great. And now you're just playing the big places. Well, anyone who was at the Hope and Anchor is really pleased we're playing the big places because we were pretty crap as a club band. And I think we're a lot better. Our music's kind of a big music and it's, it suits the big, big spaces, I think. Actually, uh, we should take this opportunity to say that we're... There, there's been an announcement in the English press about some sh some shows in Wembley, but in fact, they're not the only shows we're doing in England. We're doing shows in Scotland, shows in Wales, shows in the north of England, indoors and outdoors. So we're actually planning a really comprehensive English tour, probably our most comprehensive for the last three or four years. And that should be... When is that? What's the dates? Anyone know? Uh, I don't know. I don't no, know the dates at all, but I think... Sometimes during the summer. Yeah. Some people might be a bit cross for us saying that on this program live, but uh, I'm sure they'll excuse us because uh, I think we might as well say to everybody that that is what's planned. So Now, um, a lot of people probably think of you as kind of um, a bit of a mystical group, got a bit of a mystical vibe, you know, hey? Yes, Do you think uh, that um, maybe you are a bit sort of closet hippies? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> actually, I think I should... So, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, I think really, it's, it's, I mean, I don't know. I mean, the whole thing after 1976, I mean, my record collection just began in 1976. And, uh, I mean, I heard, I grew up on music like Jimi Hendrix Experience or Janis Joplin and stuff, but they weren't my records. The first records I bought were, you know, Patti Smith records or Clash records. And, uh, I think that U2 has the anger of, of what came after 76. But I think 
there is a if uh, there is a love in our music, uh, if that's not too strong a word, which maybe you could associate with the era before 1976, but it's it's not all love and peace at all. In fact, anyone who knows us would tell you that grouchy. or works for us. <laughs> you there? Yeah. Sorry. Can you be, as your earpiece. Anyway, <laughs> now that you've shut up for a minute, I have to say bye bye. But it was really nice to talk to you, and we'll see you again. Yeah. Okay. Take your care. Thanks for uh, talking to Paula. us. God bless, Paula. Bye. 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 Um, and now we're going to go to Jules. <laughs>